from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of the daily televised Mass. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made, by a pos made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first are Norma de Alla and family from Etobicoke, Ontario, in memory of her husband, Roger de Alla, on the 19th anniversary of his death, and her mother, Virginia Dungo, on the 27th anniversary of her death. The second is the estate of Dennis Carr for the repose of the soul of Dennis Carr. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. And today we welcome Norma de Alla and Dennis Carr's daughter, Elaine, to Loretto Abbey. Today we celebrate the feasts of the martyrs, St. John Fisher and St. Thomas More very dear saints to me, and it's a very special day for me too because 59 years ago today was the very first day I celebrated as a seminarian in the Jesuit order. God has been very good to me and to the 21 Jesuits who joined with me. As we begin this Eucharist, let us now call to mind our sins. Let us call to mind that we have a God, a God who loves us, just as we will hear it in our first reading today. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. I'm saying the prayer of St. John Fisher and Thomas More. God, who in the martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, graciously grant that strengthened through the intercession of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of our life the faith we profess with our lips. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. A reading from the second book of Kings. When Ataliah, Ahaziah's mother, saw that her son was dead, she set about to destroy all the royal family. But Jehosheba, King Joram's daughter, Ahaziah's sister, took Johash, son of Azahiah, and stole him away from among the king's children who were about to be killed. She put him and his nurse in a bedroom. Thus, she hid him from Ataliah so that he was not killed. He remained with her six years, hidden in the house of the Lord, while Ataliah reigned over the land. But in the seventh year, Jehoiada summoned the captains of the Karaites and the gods and had them come to him in the house of the Lord. He made a covenant with them and put them under oath in the house of the Lord. Then he showed them the king's son. The captains did according to all that the priest Jehoiada commanded. Each brought his men who were to go off duty on the Sabbath with those who were to come on duty on the Sabbath, and they came to the priest Jehoiada. The priest delivered to the captains the spears and the shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of the Lord. The gods stood, every man with his weapon in his hand, from the south side of the house to the north side of the house, around the altar and the house to God the king on every side. 
Then he brought out the king's son, put a crown on him, and gave him the covenant. They proclaimed him king and anointed him. They clapped their hands and shouted, Long live the king! When Ataliah heard the noise of the God and of the people, she went into the house of the Lord to the people. When she looked, there was the king standing by the pillar according to custom, with the captains and the trumpeters beside the king, and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Ataliah tore her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! Then the priest Jehoiada commanded the captains who were set over the army, Bring her out between the ranks and kill with the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest said, Let her not be killed in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her. She went through the horse's entrance to the king's house, and there she was put to death. Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people, also between the king and the people. Then all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and tore it down. His altars and his images, they broke in pieces, and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet after Ataliah had been killed with the sword at the king's house. The word of the Lord. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. The Lord swore to David a sure oath from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. If your sons keep my covenant and my decrees that I shall teach them, their sons also forevermore shall sit on your throne. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, then your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. The Gospel of the Lord. Our first reading done by Paula was a rather gruesome and violent story. The story of the killing of Athaliah, of her son Azariah, of the enthronement of her grandson Joash. Now, this shouldn't have been surprising because Athaliah was the daughter of the famous or infamous King Ahab and Queen Jezebel who tried to kill Elijah. It was a violent family and they killed Nabob. As we read in the last two weeks, all the histories of violence from her parents and she carried it on. Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. So it's not surprising. But Jesus didn't, when did Jesus learn this? What did he learn it from, studying his own Jewish history? Or did he use it because as we hear in John chapter two, Jesus didn't trust himself to people because he knew what was in man. I'd like to think that Jesus just used his common sense. If you start violence, if you start rage, if you start anger and respond to it with rage, violence and anger, all you will do is carry on that circle which never ends. Many people in rage will do things and say things which later on they regret. And we see it not only in scripture, we see it in our everyday life. Recently at the G7 summit in Quebec, or as some people like to call it, the G6 plus one summit in Quebec, there was rage and opposition, and very often it was basically because of delusions of intelligence and inflated egos. Now, there were not bloodshed and violence like in the case of Queen Athaliah, but there was damage, and a lot of damage was done as well. 500 years ago, we have the story of St. John Fisher and St. Thomas More in the court of the famous Henry VIII, made famous nowadays by Herman Hermit's Henry VIII, I am, I am. But that's not the most important thing. The important thing over here was, here was a man that was so full of himself and wanted his own ways that he was willing to kill people for the sake of what he wanted. And Jesus would say in the gospel, where your treasure is, your heart is also there. His treasure was to hold on to being the king of England. Now in those days, there was no separation of state and the church. Henry VIII was the sovereign in England, but as a Catholic, he owed obedience to the Pope. And that's where the problem came. He wanted to get rid of his wife, Catherine of Aragon, Little did he realize that ordinary Catholics would stand up against it. One of them was John Fisher, an ordinary Catholic becoming a priest with, in, with intelligence, theologically, theological intelligence par excellence. In fact, he was made the Bishop of Rochester 
in Kent, which is about 30 miles to the south of London. And when he heard that Henry VIII wanted to put aside his wife, he came to the palace and in front of Henry VIII and his courtiers defended Catherine of Aragon, which made Henry really, really angry. Here was an intelligent man, Henry was. And so when St. John Fisher, or Bishop John Fisher at that time, decided to defend the case, Henry VIII would reply in Latin. And then, to make matters worse, he passed the Act of Succession in 1534, saying, I am the head of the church in England. Needless to say that John Fisher and Thomas More, who was a good friend of Henry VIII, rebelled against them, and they threw both of them in prison. Now, at that time, Pope Paul III was the pope, and in order to changed the mind of Henry, he made John Fisher a cardinal while he was still in jail. Henry VIII sent the cardinal's hat back and he said, I'll send the head back so you can put it in Rome. When we answer rage with rage, we don't get anywhere. Jesus, who is meek and humble of heart, challenges us to answer with kindness, with love and compassion. May God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. For those who have asked to be remembered in our prayer intentions book, for those facing significant life transition in health, relationship, finances, or housing, we pray to the Lord. For our sponsors of this Mass, those who are here present, and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. You've, Jesus has offered himself in sacrifice for our sins. We ask you, Lord, to accept our in, in, intentions and our work today. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you bring us joy by the light of another day. Let the morning star rise in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts you've given us and continue to give us day by day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for our salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we proclaim and praise your glory as we sing together.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the, me the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters. Remember Roger, remember Virginia, remember Dennis, and those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint John Fisher, with Saint Thomas More, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. When we eat this bread,
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember that all requests for prayers are included in our prayer intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants.